Peggy and Velma, the leader, Jemima, who I am fuchsia, flower meadow, love hole, I'm a swamp, well I am wet and dangerous. I'm a boo boo, noo noo, woo woo, hoo hoo. I'm a coochie 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 cut. I call her Bridget, because that's my birth name, Bridget, but uh, Bridget is is the goddess Bridget, she's a goddess Bridget, or Bridget the Sage. So there's a kind of a bridge there between the past and the future and change. And Bridget is Mary of the Gale, so she's kind of considered the Irish Mary. So Mary represented to me the female divine feminine in this loss in the church, so I want to reclaim her. So then I saw that she looked like a vagina. Yep. I think we need more fannies for yeah. choice. Yeah. <laughs> what would you choose? Have your choice. I love you. I'm a lady, a pocketbook, a red book, a powerhouse, I'm a castle, I'm a Gigi. Or the Gigi's the pure, the Virgin Mary, cause she's very important to us. Well, I'm here tonight to help the launch of Rosa, which is a socialist feminist uh, group that we had established in Dublin and Cork and in other cities. And now in Galway, there's been a huge interest as well. Obviously, the focal point of the meeting will be the repeal referendum. I believe it's the biggest civil rights issue of this generation. And I think young people have generally driven the repeal movement. Um, we witness injustice upon injustice committed against women daily, the lack of bodily autonomy in this country, the, more the way that survivors are raped or treated, the stigma and shame enforced by the Catholic Church and the control that they have over our lives. These injustices are not random or accidental. They are all connected in this capitalist patriarchal society that breeds misogyny and sexism. Rose's goal is to point out to people how they are connected and equip people with the tools to rise up against it. I'm a lady, a pocketbook, a rent book, a powerhouse, I'm a castle, I'm a vajayjay, or the vajayjays if you're the Virgin Mary. I'm a tunnel of love, a pad growler, a punani, or a simple vanny, said my granny. I'm a poop poop. Uh, so welcome everybody, thank you for coming along today. Uh, we're here in National University of Galway. I'm sitting here with Jenny Owen Thomas, who's part of Parents for Choice. Um, and I'm especially interested because I'm soon to be a parent myself. So can you tell me a little bit more about what, if, what is it that I'm up against here as a woman who's continuing her pregnancy? There's a thing called the HSE National Consent Policy, which states who can give consent um, around treatments and interventions. And pregnant women are specifically excluded from that. Lots of our members would have direct experience of being coerced into treatments or interventions. Um, things like we don't want to go down the legal route. Uh, women have been brought to the High Courts because of it. So for example, Mother B was brought to the High Court to be forced to consent to a C-section um, against her wishes. No matter how you feel about the Eighth Amendment, it, it does affect your pregnancy in, in some way. Gulp. A lot of the medication that I'm currently on I, if I fall pregnant, I will have to come off that and that will have a negative effect on me. As much as I would want to have this pregnancy and continue it on, it's not really fair that something unborn could risk my life. Denise is my name and this is Rosa. And we are hoping that very soon the Irish people will go out and vote um, for gender equality and to make sure that Rosa is brought up in a society where her and only her decides what happens to her body. I'm in the Irish Centre for Human Rights here and I'm studying gender and human rights. As an unmarried mother from Tum originally, uh, if Rosa had been born 50 years ago, her fate might have been very different. And this state has such a long history of abuse of women's bodies and men's bodies. Um, so we just feel very strongly that if we have any rights, it is the right to decide what happens to our own bodies. 
So what I'm looking at is the emigration of Irish unmarried mothers from 1926 to 67. So I'm looking at the stigma of pregnancy outside of wedlock and why they felt a need to emigrate to Britain. And in studying this research, it's really pushed me forward to, to do more about the current situation where women are still emigrating to Britain for assistance. In, in repealing the Eighth Amendment, we're allowing for people to be able to make reproductive choices in an open way that's safe and regulated. I can't keep quiet, no, no. I can't keep quiet, no, no. One woman riot. I can't keep quiet for anyone. I have to kind of speak up for those people who can't, for those people who are embarrassed to, or those people who just can't say anything. So with my voice, I should be able to support them. And like, especially as a a migrant woman who was born in Ireland, like there's so many people who are unheard or not even thought of. So um, in my position, I thought like it was essential that I spoke about this and like campaigned hard to repeal the A. Yeah, so MERGE stands for Migrants and Ethnic Minorities for Reproductive Justice. And we're basically a grassroots movement, a grassroots group. When we talk about um, abortion rights in Ireland, so there is this very solid narrative that goes around women who have to travel abroad in order to get an abortion, especially in England. Um, but usually the narratives of migrant women and ethnic minorities and women who cannot really afford to travel abroad, they are kind of, I don't know, left out and of the conversation. And we are trying to bring our voices to the conversation, our experiences, and try to um, gather as a support group for each other, you know, for us to talk about our issues in public. The whole idea is actually to challenge the discriminative laws of Ireland because this is actually point blank discrimination because uh, migrant women in most cases they cannot afford to travel abor abroad and there's many many obstacles to traveling if, if they need to get an abortion especially regarding the status of the person in the state the women on direct provision they just cannot get out of the country to get um, an abortion done and this, this service is not provided here and uh, migrant women are literally being forced to carry on with unwanted pregnancies. There's many, many cases, like the most visible cases that we have, which is um, Savita. She's, uh, she was a migrant woman, and Miss Y, the woman, she got raped in her country, and then she came here, and she was denied an abortion. We need to realize that Ireland has modernized, and Ireland is opening its doors for so many people to come over here. And then it's totally unfair for these people to come over here and face such discriminative laws, you know, so uh, yeah, I would say please vote for yes, because by voting for yes, you're going to actually help us women who cannot really vote, but we are really in a, in a situation where we really need the Eighth Amendment to be repealed. Um, so I suppose over the years, I think especially in Galway, there's been a very strong presence with Galway Pro-Choice that was set up in 2012. It was Savita's family that got in touch with Galway Pro-Choice. Uh, so Savita Halepanaba very tragically died in the hospital that's part of um, NUIG campus that we're on now. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the impact of, of her death? The case of um, Savita it really shook, I think, the entire country, um, but especially uh, Galway. Um, so since then, up until this point, there's just been a constant pro-choice presence. Like back in 2012, it was it was really different to how it is now. I mean, people didn't want to say the word abortion. You know, some of the people who were involved at the start of Galway Per Choice kind of talked about how they tried to have a, a public meeting in Tume, you know, shortly after they set up and, you know, they, nowhere. They couldn't get a venue. They were being denounced by the priest, the local priest, for trying to organize in Tume. Um, and I think it shows how different things are now um, when you know, uh, go east, are getting a really warm welcome in Tume and Ballinasloe and different and different rural towns like that. I know the fear of putting yourself out there. There's an expression in Ireland, and I'm sure you've heard of the Valley of the Squinting Windows. You know, this this notion of rural communities, everyone's watching everybody else and talking about everybody else, and if you do something wrong, you're ostracised. 
I think that's a version of rural Ireland that needs to be consigned to history because things are changing. But the only way that's going to really happen in this election and the other election is by people like you and all of us here making ourselves visible and saying, hi, we're going to name ourselves. So you can then name yourself, you know. But in some ways, it's about also the people who can't name themselves, who will just walk by the stall and be like, that happened to me. Now is the time, we've got a couple of weeks. What are you waiting for? Do you know, so hopefully if you're watching this, uh, you know, get in touch. Go East. We have people jumping on board, wanting to do Portumna, wanting to do Kinvara, um, and we're letting them run with it. We're really just providing them with the leaflets and the training, and it's fantastic. They're all doing their own areas. There, there's no shame. It's a really positive campaign, full of compassion and eager for change. I started in her shoes after doing an information stall in my local town, talking with an older gentleman, particularly who was kind of on the fence, but quite pro-life. Um, and I realized that he just didn't really understand the various and vast reasons of why a woman would um, need an abortion. Like, what's her background story? And I just thought if he heard what women are going through in their personal lives and what brings them to need to travel or to access that care, then he would have a little bit more compassion. So I went home that night and I was thinking about offering an opportunity for people to take a walk in her shoes, walk a mile in somebody's shoes and know their story and understand um, why they do what they do and why they need support. Currently we have over 62,000 followers um, and I'm receiving over 20 stories a day from women who are pouring their hearts out to me, telling me that sometimes I'm the first person that they've told, um, telling me how incredibly healing it has been for them to experience sharing their story, um, not just for themselves, but to see the reactions from others, um, receiving comments from people saying, I was kind of on the fence, and now after reading this, I, um, I definitely have changed my mind. So I worked with a designer to make um, some little booklets um, called In Her Shoes, One of the Eighth. Created these so that way I could bring them uh, to rural areas, uh, older generations that aren't accessing social media. So I will be sending them out to 26 women in 26 counties to spread them out amongst themselves. Um, so it's really changing conversations with people who aren't accessing social media. Um, so hopefully the book will help that. <laughs> She was 14 when it happened Only know it happened hard Hiding under baggy jumpers Hearing whispers in the yard It's too late to change her story might have had a different end Would you refuse Her right to choose I'm asking for a friend They were thrilled to be expecting Soon she knew all hope was gone but the doctors could not save her While the fetal heart beat on It's too late to change her story So change the law, they would not bend Would you refuse her right to choose? I'm for a friend She was a mother sick with cancer Her consultant's views were clear Termination was the answer Go pack your bags, it can't happen here uh, It's just disgraceful the way we, we export 
are women like cattle. Here we are in in the Clare, the the, the Ennis Mart. It's quite appropriate now that I think about it. Uh, I just think it's disgraceful. I'm just deeply, deeply insulted and deeply upset by the whole situation. Ten women a day are forced to travel. I don't think there is a lot of realisation of how much we have been dumping our problems on the UK. And I know in the last fortnight, a hospital in Liverpool came out to say that they just couldn't actually uh, cope with the amount of women that were travelling over from Ireland. So, yeah, it's just shocking. You know, it's about time that Ireland kind of faced up to what is happening on a daily basis. Three women a day are taking abortion pills in Ireland. So for anybody who thinks that, you know, abortion is not happening, it's here, it's happening every single day. Women who are taking these abortion pills risk you know, 14 years in jail and they're just scared to go to their doctor. Someone asked me, why did you get involved in um, Claire Together for Yes? And I thought, why wouldn't you? I got two teenage daughters. Uh, and I guess when living in England, you don't really think about reproductive rights because it's there and it's available. We've had young people coming to the stalls we've had in Ennis. Mm. Uh, and that's great because the future is always the youth. Look at America at the moment and the gun rights lobby. It's yes. being pushed it's by amazing. the youth. It's it's awesome. Yeah, um, absolutely. And we need to get the same grassroots support here. That would be yeah. fantastic. Oh, I'd say to anybody sitting on the fence that really to take into consideration the women of Ireland. Do you know that unless the Eighth Amendment is absolutely removed from the Constitution, we're going to continue exporting women and killing women in this country because the Eighth Amendment has in fact killed women. And we don't even know the extent to which that has happened because of the maternal inquests and the lack thereof. Mm -hmm. So really, they need to take into consideration their mothers, their sisters, their aunts, their nieces, all the women they know and vote to keep them safe, vote to remove the, uh, remove the Eighth Amendment. O Savita Sheila Ann, X and Y Michelle Joanne, all the ones we cannot name, who lived or died in fear and shame. Oh, what woman, oh, what man, would say you can't and not you can who send you This to referendum is only possible it's only possible because women disobeyed women would not put up with and eventually women told it's been the stories it's been women saying I took the abortion pill I travelled this is what I did this is why I did it this is why I would not could not obey the law that's why we have a referendum you know already what happens if we keep the 8th amendment we have ample evidence of that that's one certainty do you want to keep that or not? And if you're not happy with any aspect, any one of those cases, if there's anything there that troubles you, you should absolutely vote yes. That's, that's my view. I'm asking for a friend. I'm asking for the girl next door. The family on the second floor. The woman who can take no more. The Magdalene scrubbed that floor On the opening of Eva myself and my comrades at the Artist Campaign to Repeal the Eighth will be processing through the streets starting off from the Limerick School of Art and Design which is in the location of the original Magdalene Laundry in Limerick so we'll be moving from that space with all the spirits of the women of those thousands and thousands of women who were once incarcerated in that building Hopefully they'll join with us and move through the streets with our banners to celebrate women's right to choice and also our own autonomy and agency as women. Not necessarily with, with slogans, but with the power of images and the power of performative actions to help open up people's hearts and minds to the whole issue. I'm asking for a friend Peggy and Velma and Lily, the leader, 
Jemima Goo. I am fuchsia, flower meadow, love hole. I'm a swamp, well I am wet and dangerous. I'm a snatch, muff, gee, minge, gant. Yeah, gant is a cork word. I know that because I wore my gant hoodie down to cork on school tour. G-A-N-T across the chest. This girl said to me, girl, do you know what gant means? It's your gowl, you gowl. I'm a fanwar, a fanny, a front bottom, forbidden forest. I'm possible. Well, you get into a basin, wash up as far as possible, down as far as possible, and then wash possible. I'm down there. It's an Irish horror movie. Don't go down there.